Welcome to the lecture series of Power Electronics. Uh, in this session, I am going to discuss what is inverter and how do you classify inverters based on the certain criteria. So moving on to the discussion, let's understand the meaning of inverter. So inverter is a static device that will convert DC power into AC power at desired voltage and frequency. So there are different varieties of inverter. So depends on the requirement, uh, we can use the inverter for the variable speed AC drives uh, then uh, induction heating, uh, then aircraft power supplies, solar power system, UPS, etc. The output of solar power, that is basically DC, but the our system has been designed for AC. So in, in this regard, so we need to convert DC power into AC power. For that purpose, we require uh, inverter. Inverter is mainly working based upon the switching operation of uh, like a power electronic devices. So we require either IGBT or MOSFET as a power switches. Now we'll discuss about the classification. First classification is based on the commutation. Commutation is nothing but the method of turning of the power switches. There are two type of communication, commute, like a inverter according to commutation. One is line commuted inverter, other one is post commuted inverter. Line commu commutation device, we do, do not have any other external mechanism to turn off the devices. But uh, post commutation device, we require some external devices to add to turn off the inverter. That's a major difference between line commutation div uh, inverter and a post commutated inverter. According to the method of connections, we have series inverter, parallel inverter, also we have bridge type inverter. Depends on the requirement, you can use either series, parallel, or bridge type inverter. You might have heard about like a S bridge inverter. Okay, it, it is having like a switches are four switches. We'll be having four switches. Which is which is resembled to H bridge. Okay. The like uh, see, I'll be showing you. So, like this. So we have uh, okay. So two switches will be placed like this. Okay, these are the switches, and uh, here we are keeping the load. So the structure will be like a H bridge. Hope it is clear to everybody. So I'll be continuing further. We will be checking other parameters according to the output waveforms, based on the output waveforms. So some inverter, you can see the square wave inverter. Output will be like a purely square wave. But uh, like uh, input is in this fashion. But if I talk about the output, you'll be getting like a, in this fashion. Okay. So that is called a square wave uh, inverter. But the output of square wave inverter is not suitable for uh, the sensitive devices. Okay. So that's what we are not preferring square wave inverter. However, we have another option like a modified sine wave inverter. So we are uh, fitting. So almost we are fitting uh, the like a square into sinusoidal. It is better than a purely square wave inverter. However, the problem, it is not uh, an ideal solution for the permanent devices. That is a major issue of modified sine wave inverter. Now, we'll, we, what is our requirement is we require pure sine wave inverter. So the most of our devices are operating. Over 90% of the devices are operating pure sine wave. Uh, so we require pure sine wave inverter. Either you can use this type of inverter for uh, standalone application or grid connected application. It is best suited for all the devices and uh, all the like uh, medical equipments, electronic devices, all the sensitive hardware, we can use it for uh, pure sine wave inverter. This is the classification according to output waveforms. I think it's clear to everybody. Now, according to the power sources, we can have the classification. So we have the standalone inverter. Like uh, we have only one AC load. And uh, what we are going to do is from the solar panel, we are converting uh, like a DC to DC converter will be used. Then next, we will be keeping the DC to AC converter. That is nothing but inverter. Okay. Then uh, you will be operating the load independently. That is called a standalone inverter. Another one is called a grid tied inverter. So whatever the power which we are going to produce from our uh, system that we are going to supply to the grid at that time we require uh, like a grid tied inverter. Here the, D, uh, the DC output that is going to supply to the grid by using a grid tied inverter. All right. Another one is actually a hybrid inverter. So both standalone combination of standalone inverter and a grid tied inverter like mode one. It is, it is going to operate it as a standalone inverter in module two mode 2, uh, the inverter will work as a grid tied inverter. That's why it's not a, it is uh, known as hybrid inverter. So, okay, it is having both the function, on grid and off grid uh, portion. Two modes you can select. Mode 1, uh, standalone. Mode 2, grid tied. Right. 
So according to another parameter, we can see number of phases. We have single phase inverter, other one is called a three phase inverter. Depends on the supply. Normally we use single phase inverter in the household application. If I talk about like industrial loads, we require three phase supply. So at that time we can have three phase inverter. Okay, that is a major difference between single phase inverter. Another one is three phase inverter. Uh, now, according to uh, the op operating type, we have VSI and uh, CSI. VSI is nothing but voltage source inverter. Here, uh, the operation of voltage source inverter is nothing but it convert constant DC voltage into AC. It is widely used for more uh, like a uh, uh, variable frequency drive and industrial applications. All right. So that is actually called a voltage source inverter. If I talk about the current source inverter, it will convert constant DC current into AC. Okay, so here uh, we have the sources are different. Here we are considering voltage source. The second case we are considering the current source. Here the typical applications such as indus induction heating and a high power motor drive, we prefer uh, to have uh, current source inverter. That is a major difference between voltage source inverter and the current source inverter. So there are a few more differences that I will make a separate video. What are the major differences between VSI and CSA? That is one of the most important topic and interview question. Uh, so the, which is concerned. Another one is based upon the application. We have solar inverter. Other one is called a UPS inverter. Full form of UPS is uninterruptible power supply. Solar inverter that is going to convert like a Power which is produced from the solar panel is purely DC. So we, we require, our system will be operating under AC, under the AC. So we require an interfacing device such as solar inverter that will convert whatever the DC generated by the solar panel into AC. That is what it is called a solar inverter. Uh, if I talk about like a UPS inverter, uh, it is just like a, from the, uh, we require like a, a battery, uh, then we require one inverter, but then uh, our supply. So what exactly happening is, during like normal uh, condition, the battery is getting charged based upon the uh, supply. So uh, what you can do is battery will be stored. It is normally used in the household application. So battery output, battery output will be inverted by using uh, UPS inverter. So battery, uh, then inverter, uh, then your grid. That is a major thing of UPS inverter, which is ap applicable in our household. Household and uh, like uh, uh, colleges, schools, such kind of buildings you can use UPS inverter. So these are the classification of inverter. In this video, uh, you have learned what do you mean by inverter? Second one, how do you classify the inverter? What are the major parameters to classify the inverter? In the next session, I'm going to discuss about what is the major difference between current source inverter and voltage source inverter. Let me know if you have any queries related to this topic. I'm happy to answer. You can put a message to the comment box. I'll be answering to your questions. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a, have a great day. Happy learning.